hi, Hugh. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Oh, I love your background. That's great. I had the first edition of Swamp Thing years ago. I was oh, do huge... you really? Yeah, you still I... have it? No, I was a huge comic book collector and record collector. I love it. Yeah, I th- these are a couple of my prized uh, pieces, but I've got I've got boxes. Yes. Of, of them. So they're there. I mean, I work for comicbook.com. So duh. Right. Yeah. Um, actually, for starters, I, I, I know you've been asked this. I know you're going to be asked this all day, but, you know, I'm with comicbook.com and we're very huge fans of Jeremy. We all love him. And so I, yes. I was just curious if you've had a chance to talk with him yet. Yeah, I mean, it was the biggest relief. Um, it was such a roller coaster because I wanted to when I got the news, I wanted to fly out and find him and see him. And, and then he sent me a um video the next day the biggest relief of my life because it was so funny and profane and i was just like okay he's he's gonna come back um he's just so funny he's like a brother to me it's like you know we've worked on this show for two years this is my a show i created with taylor sheridan and renner is just you know um he's just unstoppable he's an exceptional talent and he's just the crew loves him the cast loves him i love him and it was i was just uh, my world stopped i just want him to recover and then to get the video and hey you know and just profanity profanity you know uh, it just made me laugh and cry at the same time and i just you know thank god he's okay and he's uh you know on the road to recovery that's amazing i i uh actually that's making me terrible a little bit we've all been really worried about him and i and i I, I love to hear that. I, I love to hear that. I mean, he seems like his spirits have been really high since he's come out with a few videos, and that's awesome to hear. He's great, um, and mom's with him, and his sister's with him, and his family's with him, and he's he's you know he's on the way. It's just so shocking with anyone. It's it's that is the unpredictability of life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about Mayor of Kingstown. Yeah. Uh, in season two, there's this huge emphasis on PTSD certain characters are experiencing after the prison takeover. Now, how do you think Ian is coping with the trauma of being held hostage? And will we see that play out for him this season? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that you know, that he is such a desensitized dude and he is so... um it's fun to you know, Taylor's a master storyteller. He's a world class writer. It's and he used to be my acting coach. So for me, I'm just so proud of him. But yet he is. It's it's crazy to see he what he's always so capable of delivering. And with that, it was um, watching the ethical drift of Ian. You know, be able to. Just the things that the character, like Taylor, I don't know if you saw episode one in, in um, the second season. Have you mm-hmm. seen that? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not, I've, never, I've never seen somebody shoot a dog so many times. Yeah. You're not supposed to, <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about that. But it was like, when I read that on the page, I was, holy Jesus. And then to act it, it was, you know, Taylor's a master. That is such yeah. a, and then when you see it, because I'm in post, when you see it and we cut it together, it's like, that is outrageous. And for the character, I mean, we based it on a, a guy that I knew who passed away when I was 27, Ian Goodfellow. I grew up with him. And he has a funny sense of humor in real life. And I'm from this town in real life, um, you know, that has nine penitentiaries. And it's just Taylor has brought his Texas feel to it. And um, we put it in Michigan. My uncle is from there. And um, to watch what he does with these characters and these scenes is shocking but it is life it is Mm -hmm. unpredictable it is the most dangerous show on television and i just can't get enough of it and to to your point playing ian is just crazy you know and i thought that was pretty like i was thinking about that after that first episode where you know clearly you know characters are experiencing this in different ways and i was like well ian seems like he's He's all right. But then I, but then I was kind of thinking, I was like, nah, he's sort of like really unloaded in that, in that moment. And so I think, you know, so there are these layers that he's, he's dealing with it and maybe not in the most healthy of ways. No, because they're all hypervigilant and they're Mm -hmm. all been traumatized and that in that hypervigilance, it's, it's like, oh, you know, you, you've reacted inappropriately. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. Now I, I would imagine that the worst possible scenario for a prison, this is the inmates taking over. So because that happened in season one, can you tease where season two goes from there? Like in a show very centered around prison, like how do you guys plan to top that? 
Well, it's it's easy, really, because it comes down to Taylor Sheridan and and just his he, his storytelling is so uncomfortable that you just switch the lens a little bit and and you know in this this world you get a little more intimate. You see, and so in the first season, if you were introduced to the characters in the world, this season we're seeing why they do what they do and how we top that is the scene we're talking about. That you you push in on all of that and what are these people really doing and then you pull back and you see and how does it affect everything else and it's catastrophic and it's explosive and the way we do it is taylor writes with such velocity that you know first of all you're dealing with this informal economy of drugs and crime second of all you're dealing with the collateral um societal damage that affects everybody personally mentally emotionally and then third of all, he does it in such a way that that velocity that you're watching on screen becomes hypnotic because it's so unpredictable. Right. Now, I, I wanted to bring this up. There was this archery scene with Jeremy in season one, and he actually said that he wanted to take it out because of the Hawkeye connection. So I was just curious if you were there for that conversation about whether to include that scene or not. I was, and I remember, but the, just to, to be quite honest with you, so much has happened that, oh yeah, I have to go back and think about that. I remember that being something we thought about at the time, but then we, you know, you're just moving on. We're in COVID and other things happen and I'm producing. So that was like, oh, uh, and also the, the problem with making things at this stage now and producing is you also, um, problem solve so from my point of view is well shoot it don't shoot it we can fix it in editing or okay, you know what i mean right. so when right. you're asking me i have to reach back and go, oh yeah that was the thing and do it but i um because i flagged it too you know because this show was written before hawkeye this was written 10 years ago um, oh wow I, yeah i didn't ago. know that taylor right. was my acting coach taylor wasn't the taylor sheridan of the taylor verse he was my coach in la and he was coaching me on shows and I brought this show to him and I brought a printer with me because I'd never met anybody who could um, understand. Yeah, I, it was, it's funny because, you know, Taylor Sheridan sort of blown up recently with, you know, Yellowstone and everything. And and uh, and then I, I just heard the name over and over and over these last couple of years. And then when I finally looked him up, I was like, oh, that's the, the guy from Sons of Anarchy. I didn't I had <laughs> yeah. no idea that was him. Yeah. And yeah. he was my coach and he was a lot of actors coaches. You know, he was uh you know, and he's a teacher and he's, you know, has always been my mentor and he understood this world and he coached me to some great shows and some great characters. And then I went to work for him. You know, it's like That's I he is the most loyal dude I've ever met in my life. I learned to trust him and he has never let me down. He's helped me pick, you know, what I was doing with um, acting and where I came from. I'm a punk rock singer and a punk rock band and I transitioned to acting and I I um. I, I did a movie with Vera Farmiga called Down to the Bone about 2004. And she said, you know, you got to stop doing drugs and f***ing around, basically. You need to go to L.A. and take this seriously. And I met Taylor and he was like, dude, you can do this and I'm going to show you how. You got to trust me. And it's like, all right. And then I trusted him with this story and he was like, I know what to do. And I was like, I know you do. And here's yeah. the printer. So start writing. <laughs> and, uh, That's amazing. He uh, he seems like a solid dude. I uh, I I love his work, but he seems like yes. a really great guy. Well, that's now, sli yeah. slight yeah. spoilers, but you had a great run on Yellowstone. Um, yeah. Was Sheriff Haskell killed off in order to give you more time to work on Mayor yes. Kingstown? Yes. Okay, it was. So I didn't know if that was the case or if it was just that's where the story took the character. No, nope, that was the case because we sold it um, eventually. Like you know, I'd been working with Taylor for my whole career, but um, you know, he got me. Uh, to you know, come and work with Renner on Wind River, and then uh, we were shooting in Utah. And then he, he said, "Come and work on Yellowstone." So ha we haven't sold Mare, but we will. He kept re you know reassuring me, "We're gonna sell it. We're gonna get there." And I'm like, "It's been ten years, dude, but whatever." <laughs> and uh, and uh, and then the day he said, "Okay, we've sold Mare. You're gonna learn how to produce it. You've got to listen to me. You've got to." trust me and I'm there and he goes and I wrote you a, an honorable death in Yellowstone and then you're going to move right into mayor 
And so I was, and this was in, during the pandemic. So he's like, you got to drive to Texas right now. I don't want to hear anything. I accept that sound of the engine and you call me from your car. And I'm like, I'm doing it. Drove to Texas. We wrote the rest of Mayor and we shot that death scene for Yellowstone. And then I was producing and we, and it's just been a blur ever since. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, I, this I want to know for my own personal curiosity, but how amazing is Diane Wyest? Uh, I have been a huge fan of her since The Lost Boys. I think she's just the best. Well, Taylor, you know, will challenge me sometimes and ask me what I want to do and why I want to do it. And so his question to me was in Texas. Um, and we just finished all of the episodes for first season of Mare. And he said, OK, so who do you want? And the character is based on my mom. Who do you want to play? Um, Miriam. Diane Weiss. He went. That is the right answer because that was his first choice too. And so we didn't talk about it. We just both. And then I said, yeah, but, and he said, no, nope, trust me. And I went, all right. By the time I got to Nashville driving back, she's in. And are then, you in Nashville? No, no. I was driving back from Texas to Nashville. Got you. Got you. I'm in Nashville. I was just curious. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And uh, excuse me. And, uh, she's just another force in nature. This whole project is with these incredible, um, artists who are just, you know, from Renner to Taylor to, to everybody. Um, but Diane has just taught me so much. Um, you know, our scenes are this year are um, extraordinary and she's, uh, you know, she's invested and she's committed and so much so that when she gets into talking about the prisons and the families and stuff, you know, you know, in her real life, she's gone and protested at Rikers Island in New York. She puts her money where, where her mouth is. And, um, and, and I, you know, you you learn from these folks, you know, um, everything. And so it's just been uh, extraordinary. These scenes that have been built and her and I get along. And now that I passed the test, we can laugh. And but they're, you got to be on it. You know, yeah. they're 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 who they are for a reason. Yeah, I heard she's sort of like a celebrity doppelganger for my mom. Like I, I, they look very similar alike. Yes. So I've always had that sort of like feeling with her as oh, far I guess as, you, you know yeah, what I mean, I'm where I, I just had that connection. Um, no. Now, last question, you know, based on how this season plays out, are you and the team hoping to do a third season? Like, do you guys already have an idea about where the series would go? Oh, yeah. Next? Yeah, we've had Taylor and I, like, like I said, it took 10 years to build. So we were two guys who were like, then what happens? And so as we're, you know, as he's helping me audition and, you know, um, and he's doing his thing, we are constantly building this. So by the time it hit, we had... 10 years to, you know, construct it. So yeah, we've got um, a big future plan for, um, for mayor. Oh, that's amazing. Um, between your acting and your music, I mean, you've had an incredible career and the, the opportunity to work with so many awesome people. Is there any one person that you've met or worked with that you feel like you got the most starstruck by? Um, that's a good question. I mean, that's a good question. I don't think so because I'm a musician first. So the acting kind of came second. So, I mean, even, my, even in music, I mean, if, if there's a, I would be starstruck if, if I met Bob Dylan, you know, that's pretty much it because I understand the mechanics of the rest of it. And, the uh, um, you know, but that guy is just somebody who's been a part of my last name is Dylan and my older brothers and sisters were were fanatical about him. And I, you know, that's why I write songs and and, you know, to have that kind of career and still write. He's just a fascinating individual to me. And also his disposition, I find interesting. He doesn't pander. And I I love that uncomfortableness. I think that's a great answer. Hugh, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but thank you so much for the interview. I really appreciate yes. it. I can't wait to watch the rest of the season. Oh, you love it. Thank you. Uh -huh, absolutely. Okay. Ciao.